All righty. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, good to see you here. I'm Derek Kilmer. I have the honor of chairing the New Democrat Coalition, uh, which is made up of forward-thinking, uh, pro-innovation, fiscally responsible, uh, pro-economic growth Democrats. We are now, uh, as of this week, 104 members strong, uh, including 42 freshman members in the coalition. That makes us the largest ideological coalition among House Democrats. Uh, making up uh, more than 40% of the House Democratic Caucus. Uh, this is the largest the coalition has ever been uh, because the freshman class flipped the House uh, on the promise to get things done for the American people, and that's what we're here uh, to talk about today. We are consistently focused on solving old problems through a new lens, ensuring we can grow the economic pie for everybody so that every American has an opportunity to earn a slice of it. Rather than looking at government as always the problem or the solution to all problems, the New Democrat Coalition has an agenda that focuses on how to reinvent government to make sure that it's doing better, a better job of solving problems on behalf of the American public. Uh, the New Democrat Coalition's 20 for 2020 uh, outlines policy priorities that Congress must tackle in order to make real, long-lasting, and bipartisan change. The coalition has and will continue to lead forward uh, looking policy priorities within the House to move the ball forward on solutions uh, uh, for some of our nation's greatest challenges. Together, working with our colleagues across the aisle, our coalition will advocate for these priorities to create greater economic opportunities for more Americans all over our country. The first priority that we lay out is to spur economic opportunity. The federal, federal government should work with both the public and the private sectors uh, to create more opportunity for more people in more places. We should revolutionize our approach to economic development by taking deliberate action to focus on the people and communities that have been left behind in today's economy. Additionally, Congress needs to work to prepare those who are entering the workforce. It needs to upskill those who are mid-career and relaunch those displaced by any disrupting force. Our view is that we need to empower workers to navigate economic change rather than to be victimized by it. And toward that end, uh, we're calling on Congress to modernize the social contract, to catch all workers uh, in today's economy so that everybody has an opportunity to succeed as the nature and structure of work continues to evolve. We have a lot more priorities that we'd like to address uh, this Congress, and to discuss more on health care, I'm going to turn it over to our Vice Chair, Annie Custer from New Hampshire. Hi, all. I'm Congresswoman Annie Custer from the 2nd District in New Hampshire, and I'm New Dems Vice Chair for Communications. Thank you for being with us. As the largest Democratic caucus in the House, we've shown our strength in numbers and policy credentials by putting forward bold ideas and innovative solutions. We will continue that work through this 2020 agenda. One of the most critical areas we're focused on is health care right at the top of the agenda for most voters and most Americans. Millions of Americans received health insurance coverage under the Affordable Care Act, but partisan attacks by this administration have undermined the benefits and stability of the ACA, leaving health care out of reach, unaffordable, or at risk for millions of Americans. And even for Americans with health insurance, health care can still be complex, costly, and even inaccessible. We outline priorities which will fix and expand the Affordable Care Act and embrace new policies that build on its foundation to reach affordable, universal coverage. Congress must reverse partisan actions by the Trump administration that undermine the protections, the affordability, and the availability of health coverage and care for every American. Congress should also focus on durable solutions that lower drug prices and find new cures and make health care more affordable and accessible for everyone, including prescription medication. As a member of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, I have helped usher through new dam bills on the committee, including protecting Americans with pre-existing conditions and lowering the cost of prescription drugs, and will continue to advocate with my colleagues on the committee Scott Peters and others for real action on our priorities. And for our discussion on trade and economic opportunity, I now turn it over to my colleague, Congresswoman Susan Delpenny. 
Thanks, Annie. Um, I'm Congressman Susan Delbeni from Washington State, and I serve as the Vice Chair for Policy for the Coalition. Um, we have eight policy task forces um, in the 116th Congress, and they're led by new dem issue area experts that work to develop policies to help Americans get ahead in the changing economy, to keep us safe, and to support a healthier planet and public. Through our task forces and as an overall coalition, we want to work with members on both sides of the aisle, um, committee leadership and caucus leadership, to advance these viable policy solutions that can make real change. The American people have told us they want Congress to get things done, and it's our time to act. We must ensure that Congress pushes forward policies to secure American leadership in the digital economy, consumer privacy, and cyber engagement. And Congress has only just begun work of updating laws in this space. Um, artificial intelligence and a growing digital economy are part of an evolving landscape that's creating new challenges um, from privacy and transparency online to cybersecurity and digital trade. I support the New Dems leadership role on these issues, including endorsing and building support for my consumer data privacy bill, H.R. 2013, which right now has the broadest support in Congress of any proposal on this topic. New Dems have also long advocated for a trade strategy where the U.S. leads the world in opening up new markets and setting global standards. That's why we believe we must also reassert U.S. leadership. Congress should pursue a trade agenda that respects the rules-based trading system, enacts new agreements that meet the needs of a 21st century economy, and promotes American excellence and values abroad. As a member of the Ways and Means Committee, and it, these issues are important to me and my district, um, I'll continue to advocate for real action on these and our other priorities as we all continue to work together um, and make these priorities. Um, now I want to turn it over to my colleague from California, Congressman Scott Peters. Thank you, Susan. Uh, I'm uh, Congressman Scott Peters, proud also to serve as Vice Chair of the Coalition. Climate change is an existential threat to the health, national security, economic prosperity, and future of our people and planet. The longer we wait to act, the more dramatic the economic, environmental, and social costs of climate change become. The United States has to be a responsible part of an international community and should reclaim its role as a global leader by advancing climate solutions and technologies that strengthen our economy and national security while urging other nations to act. We have to take immediate action to address the threat of climate change, and that's why I'm proud of the leadership role that the New Dems have been taking on this issue. We were the first ideological caucus to put forth priorities on climate change, and since then we have been endorsing and advocating for bills like my Use It Act and Super Pollutants Act that can make a real difference right now and have bipartisan support. We'll be issuing an, another set of, another round of endorsements, I think, in the near future. Existing inequities in federal policies barriers to the deployment of climate-forward technologies and underinvestment in research and development, and a lack of long-term stable price signals have prevented the United States from making the necessary progress in addressing climate goals. It's critical that the United States pursue long-term, durable solutions that are uh, pro-climate, market-based, and community-oriented community to achieve net-zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 at the latest leveraging every decarbonization tool that we have at our disposal. We have to advance a swift and just transition to a more sustainable planet and economy that promotes American workers, uh, communities, and innovators. The New Dems have also been leading the way on a related issue, affordable housing. Congress needs to address the root cause for the problem with market-based solutions that clear the way for building more affordable housing and enacting smarter planning and development. And I'd like to turn it over to my colleague from New Jersey and the Congress member for my parents, Mikey Sherrill. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm not going to speak long and, and submit you guys to my horrible voice this morning, um, but I'm so happy to be here with these great 20 objectives as we go into 2020. Um, I just had, uh, I was just had a meeting with our governor yesterday. We had the New Jersey delegation in town and, and the governor in town. And, and these are the priorities I'm hearing about from my state as well. I'll tell you, we have the biggest infrastructure project in the nation in the Gateway Tunnel Project. And um, we just heard from the Secretary of Transportation that maybe she would just fix the two tunnels that are in place already. 
Having been down in those tunnels, that's completely not feasible, first of all. And second of all, it fails to address the critical infrastructure needs of my state and the nation. So having those tunnels uh, is critical to the long-term economic success of our country. A partial closer, closure of the existing tunnel would cost the economy $16 billion and paralyze the Northeast region, the region that accounts for 20% of our nation's economy. So it's so critical to have the new Dems fighting hard for things, uh, things like infrastructure in my state. Uh, not just that, but clean drinking water and making sure we're, we're providing the necessary infrastructure as we move into a clean power economy. So these are, I think, uh, these goals are right on what the American people are looking for, the concerns that I hear daily from my state, and I'm so proud to be a member here uh, to fight hard for, for these goals. So thank you so much. And last but not least, uh, thank you, Congresswoman Cheryl. My name is Chrissy Houlihan. I represent Pennsylvania's 6th Congressional District, and that's just outside of Philadelphia. And on the New Dem Coalition, I'm the freshman leadership re representative. I come from one of those purple places that you've heard about. My community is 40% Republican, 40% Democrat, and 20% Independent. And we in Pennsylvania and in my community are pragmatic people. We place a high priority on working across the aisle and delivering wins for our community and for our commonwealth and for our country. I personally come from an entrepreneurial background. I was instrumental in growing an organization, a company called And One Basketball, and an organization called Benefit Corporation, or B Corp, and that has provided countless jobs in our community, where we prioritize careers that treat women, I'm sorry, treat workers and women with dignity and a, pay, a, a living and fair wage. One thing I very much appreciate about the pragmatic and deliberate New Dem Coalition is our commitment to those same priorities. While the top lines of our economy paint a very pretty picture, they're not a fully representative indication of the whole picture. Too many people are working multiple jobs just to afford rent, and they don't have benefits necessarily. We're struggling with a crumbling infrastructure. And while unemployment is low, businesses are struggling to find people to fill jobs that have specific skill sets. There is much work to be done, and I'm very confident that the new Dems' vision for 2020, specifically in our name priority areas of spurring economic opportunity and entrepreneurship and leading of technology, innovation, and the digital economy, will begin to address these very critical issues. I'm also a former educator and led a nonprofit focused on early childhood literacy. New Dems are emphasizing closing skills and opportunity gaps and modernizing the social contract. These goals can only be accomplished through a robust and equitable education system for everyone. And lastly, I was asked to speak on national security. So you may be, is you may be wondering why I'm raising issues like education, infrastructure, and good paying jobs. I'm here to say that all of these things are very, very closely linked. I'm a third generation veteran. Both my father and grandfather were career naval officers, and I served as an engineer in the Air Force focused on anti-ballistic missile defense. We know that too many kids in our communities aren't getting the education they need to pass the test to serve in our military. We know that when our economy is strong, our manufacturing capability is strong, we are investing in innovative technologies, that we are better able to meet the challenge of competitor nations like China and Russia. We cannot simply invest in our military and expect that, we will be, that that will be enough to protect our national security. We need a whole of government approach, really a whole of nation approach. Throughout history, the United States of America has been a leader on the global stage, but in recent years, we seem to retreat from that role. Our allies have lost faith in us, and as we continue to leave treaties and coordinated international efforts, our standing only continues to fall. We need very much to reinvest in our relationships and to reestablish our position as a global leader, the shining city on the hill. I know what it's like to serve this country, and I know what's required to rebuild and protect it. Rebuilding our reputation cannot wait. The New Dems agenda, specifically that priority of restoring American leadership and leading on climate change, begins that difficult but necessary process as well. Thank you very much for your time today, and I now hand it over to our Representative Kilmer. Okay, we're happy to open it up. Got questions? Did you have one? Yeah, can you talk a little bit about how you guys are working with the speaker to make Yeah. Well, I, I I give the speaker a lot of uh, of credit for her leadership, even during the impeachment process. 
the fact that the House continued to legislate. We've now, as a body, passed over 400 bills. Over 285 are bipartisan. Uh, I, I, on top of that, um, to the Speaker's credit, she has a weekly meeting with all of the ideological caucuses, and it's really an opportunity to give and take about what our priorities are. And the priorities that you're, uh, you're, you're seeing on this 20 for 2020 are very consistent with the conversations that we've had, um, not just with the Speaker, but with the uh, rest of the Democratic caucus. What's specific um, health care proposals do you think can make it to the floor? There is a lot of conversation about Medicare for All right now, given the 2020 campaign. I mean, you guys have passed HR3, but do you think that there are parts of Medicare for All that should be considered now that that is dominant discussion in the presidential race, or what other proposals? Sure. So, one of the things I want to just revisit this question vis a vis health care, because I think it's uh, instructive. There was nothing about the impeachment that slowed down our committee. So five committees were involved in the investigation of the president. Thirteen committees continued to work on very substantive legislation. And of the 285 bipartisan bills, any one of those could be taken up by the Senate. They're just waiting. Uh, Mitch McConnell refuses to take up these bills. So among the health care bills that we support that have already passed out of our committee, I had a bill to ensure that Americans with pre-existing conditions would be covered because this administration with the junk plans, uh, in fact, we were just questioning Rep uh, Secretary Azar yesterday on that issue. So that's one that we feel should be taken up and could pass into law. The other one that we have put a lot of energy into is HR3, the prescription drug bringing down the cost of prescription drugs. We had bipartisan solutions on generics out of our committee. The Senate is discussing those. The President has already talked about he would sign the bills to bring down the cost of prescription drugs. There's absolutely no reason that that shouldn't happen in 2020 before, uh, before the election. And so I think what we're focused on in New Dems pragmatic solutions, we call them uh, bold ideas, innovative solutions, but we're very pragmatic to work across the aisle and come up with solutions that will um, be passed into law and will make a difference in the lives of the American people. What if the Senate doesn't take up any of these? I mean, do you have a, another plan? Do you have another Well, plan? I think we'll work with the Speaker on um, there are issues coming, such as the budget, that are must-do bills, and so we'll work on getting pieces of our legislation that we know are supported by the American people to into those must-pass bills, particularly where we know that the President is willing to sign these bills. Like, there are Republicans that we're working with in the Senate that want these bills to come forward. And I think, um, you know, Mitch McConnell has tried to use this excuse, but it's not, it's not a valid excuse for not doing the work of the American people. And our proposals are broadly supported. Do you see as the legislative path for some of those sort of middle ground climate bills that you brought up? Um, well, I think uh, the way things happen um, is often the way that Annie just described. We've got some must-pass legislation in May. We've got some in toward, toward the fall. Um, the you know the committee's taken up these these um, these particular bills, HFCs, and use it in particular short-lived climate pollutant bills, um, and. Um, you know, I think the New Dems have supported them. We'll, we'll probably push to have them either come to the floor or be included in those packages. Um, the nice thing is that there's support from across the aisle um, on both of those. They would be significant, uh, and I think they would show real progress from this Congress. So um, I think uh, we'll pursue any path, whether it's getting it to the floor for a vote or whether it's appending them to uh, the must-pass um, packages we see coming up soon. Um, I'm curious if any of you met with the delegation of European lawmakers that was in Washington D.C. earlier this week, and what was said about a potential limited trade agreement with uh, the EU and any other trade areas? I, I think the person on the stage who had left, so. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be happy to talk to you yeah. about Florence. Yeah. I, think you, I think I saw you chase after her, yeah. so. <laughs> 
All right. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at, at the agenda and with Super Tuesday next week, obviously Bernie Sanders has been doing incredibly well. Are there parts of your agenda that you could see campaigning with a potential nominee Sanders, up, uh, working with a potential President Sanders? Like, what parts of this do you think could translate to someone who is much more progressive leading the ticket or, or even leading the party? Our, our hope is that, uh, that this is an agenda that Congress can get behind and that any presidential candidate can get behind because yeah, it's – any Democratic uh, presidential candidate could get behind. Well put. You know, listen, we have, you know, there's a lot of conversation about, about 2020. We have 70 legislative days left in 2020. And what we've tried to lay out here is an agenda that Congress could take action on now. All right. I'm told we got to wrap it up. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.